Welcome to the Tandem Talk Show, where we help women dial in their nutrition and fitness so that they can lose fat, tone up, and transform their lives. And now your host from Tandem Nutrition, Coach G. Yo, hey, what is up, everyone? Coach G here, back again for another episode of the Tandem Talk Show. This podcast is dedicated to help women learn how to lose a body fat in a healthy and sustainable way. In this episode today, we're going to be talking about the seven things that you need to do to lose 10 to 15 pounds before summer. I'm super excited for this episode, more so for being back on a regular podcast schedule. So if you're joining me live in our Facebook group, comment live below. Let me know that you are tuning in. And if you're watching on a replay, uh, comment replay. I'd love to see who is also uh, watching in, watching in and also tune it into our podcast as well. Also, if you want some free access to videos just like this, our best resources go to our Facebook group, which you can find at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash tandem tone up. Again, that is facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash tandem tone up and would love to have you in our group accessing more of our best fat loss resources and materials. So let's get right to it. So we are not far away from summer right now. In fact, we're only six weeks and six days away from summer at the time of this recording. I'm recording this episode episode on May 4th, 2023, and I'm excited to go over seven things that you can do to help you lose 10 to 15 pounds before summer, okay? So it's not too late if you are in this situation where maybe you feel like, hey, you know, it's um, summer is so close and I'm not really sure what to do. It's starting too late. It is not too late, okay? In fact, that's the first thing that I, I want you to focus on is starting now. It is not too late to start on your fat loss journey, to start on a healthy fat loss diet before summer. Like I said, there are six weeks and six days, a total of 48 days before summer. That is plenty of time to lose between 10 and 15 pounds if you start now, if you start this week, if you start as soon as soon as possible. And don't let the fear of trying to be perfect you keep you from starting, right? Starting something is better than starting nothing. And I was I was on a discovery call yesterday with uh, one of uh, a very nice lady who actually became one of our newest clients, and she told me something that really resonated with me. She said a friend of hers told her that instead of all or nothing, let's get the mindset of all or something, which I thought was brilliant. So instead of all or nothing, let's get the mindset of all or something. So even though you not at all figured out yet, even though you may not sure exactly how many calories, but even though you're not yet, this is one thing I'd love to start to help me get me closer to my and start on my journey of better health. So I'm excited to uh, to hear from you and also to hear what what you maybe choose to start to, to start with to help you lose body fat for the summer. So that's number one. Start now. Number two is is also very very important. In order to lose body fat, we must be in a calorie deficit. So number two is find and maintain your calorie deficit. So find and maintain your calorie deficit. So I said your because you know your calorie deficit may be different and would be different than your friend's calorie deficit. So you know you know our calorie goals are really based upon our height our weight, how active we are, our past dieting history, and quite a few other things as well. And so I know there's a lot of confusion about, you know, how many calories should I eat for fat loss? And so I have a very, very simple method I want to give you today that will help you get a rough estimate of your calorie goal, okay? It's very simple, and it will give you a really rough estimate on how many calories that you may need to lose body fat. All you do is you take your current body weight and you multiply it by 10 to 12. So 10, 11, or 12. So you take your current body weight and you multiply it by 10, by 11, or by 12. So let me give you an example. If someone weighed 175 pounds and if they multiplied their body weight by 10, their starting calorie goal, a rough estimate of it, 
would be roughly 1,750 calories. So 175 times 10 would be 1,750 calories. Now, always know that is a rough estimate of a calorie goal, and you may need to make adjustments initially or even throughout your, your diet as you begin to hit, hit plateaus. Now, plateaus are normal. Don't get discouraged. Plateaus are our body's survival mechanism trying to keep us alive because our bodies don't really know that we're trying to lose weight for cosmetic reasons. It thinks there's a threat to our survival. And because of that sense of threat, what happens is our bodies wants to keep us alive. And it does so by burning less energy. We burn less energy. And so we hit these plateaus. And in order to overcome those plateaus, we have to make adjustments. We have to decrease our calories. We have to increase our energy deficit. And that comes by way of making these adjustments. So a lot of people think that your starting calorie goal will be your ending calorie goal. And that's not the case. You know, to make adjustments, you know, we want you to make sure that you're losing body fat, eating the highest number of calories first while still losing body fat. So you're not starting out too low in calories. You're getting really hungry all of a sudden, really tired, really irritable. You know, you may get some quick weight loss, but all weight loss is not fat loss. We want to focus on fat loss. And number three is a perfect example of how to do that. In order to focus on fat loss, number three, we want to make sure that we are weight training at least two to four days per week. So weight train for at least two to four days per week. And you do not need to go to a fancy gym. You know, I'd say 80% of our clients here in our tone up community, they work out at home with a couple sets of, of dumbbells and they get some great workouts in. And, you know, so don't let the resistance of, going to the gym or not wanting to go to the gym, keep you from being consistent. And that was one of my big struggles last year. Last year, we were really involved with the business quite a lot. And I, I, you know, caught myself, you know, only going, you know, two to three times to the gym most weeks, sometimes none. And my goal was four times per week. And I'll be honest with you, I only live five to six minutes away from my local gym. And for some reason, I just could not get it out of my head to go to, the, to, to go to the gym because it was a process. It was like, you know, I, I get ready and then I get my car and then I maybe, you know, I, I would go to the workout and there's a lot of walking involved. And so I thought of all these barriers and just discouraged me on top of knowing that my workout may be 90 minutes long. And so all that put together, I'm like, I, I don't have time for this. It's really easy to say I don't have time for this when all those little um, barriers are kind of, uh, kind of, uh, combining themselves at one time. And so what I did was I, I said, okay, so in, at, at the beginning of this year, I'm like, what are some ways that I can overcome this resistance? Because my two biggest challenges were number one, I didn't want to drive somewhere and these workouts were so long, 90 minutes long. And trust me, you don't have to work out for an hour or, or 90 minutes. That's just what fit my schedule or I thought at the time. And so I thought about, I, I reflected upon what kept me from being consistent at the gym and I came up with a couple of solutions. I said, number one, if I just get some dumbbells for my garage, I have a really small garage, I said, that can help me get to the gym. And I just walked from my back door to my garage. And number two, I'm like, what if I went from working out four days a week for an hour or, not, or 90 minutes to maybe five days a week for maybe 30 minutes? And I'm like, hey, that's more doable. I can, I can, you know, find the time to walk out, up, walk out my door to hit up a quick dumbbell workout while only working out for 30 minutes. And I did that, and it's really, really helped me with being consistent. I reduced that resistance to be consistent. And so I want, I want you to think about what are some things in my, in my routine, in my schedule that are keeping me from being consistent. You know, reflect on those, look back on your schedule. And say, what is keeping me from allowing me to be as consistent as I want to be? And once you kind of recognize what is keeping you from being consistent, make adjustments to your schedule. So that's number three. Weight train for at least you know, two to four days per week. Again, these do not have to be elaborate you know, one hour, two hour workouts. Again, most of our clients train, you know, three to four days per week for around 45 minutes. So, and if you have dumbbells too, you have, you know, more than most. So that's a great start. So that is number three. Number four is also super and super important when it comes to not only losing weight, but also losing body fat. And that is prioritizing your protein. Okay. So prioritizing your protein. Protein, as you know, is the most important macronutrient for fat loss. And for those of you, you're like, yo, Coach Chi, this macronutrient word is really big. 
Let me explain it for a second. So a macronutrient, the prefix macro stands for large. So large, and then nutrient is nutrient, of course. So they are nutrients that we need in large amounts to fulfill the health and energy needs that our bodies have. So for example, carbohydrates, proteins, and fats are the macronutrients. And we have micro nutrients like vitamins and minerals like like maybe iron or or vitamin d vitamin c vitamin e magnesium things like that and so protein of the three macronutrients is the most important macro the reason why it's most important is because because it's essentially what muscle is made up of and i want you to think that protein protects muscle protein protects muscle and that's really important and that's really important because there's a strong correlation between muscle and metabolism. One of the biggest reasons why people fail to consistently lose weight throughout a diet is because they diet too aggressively. And dieting too aggressively would cause muscle loss. And losing muscle mass, you would you decrease your metabolic rate, which would make long-term fat loss and su sustainability of that fat loss a lot more difficult. A, a good range that we have our clients shoot for is anywhere between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 grams per pound of their body weight. So 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 grams per pound of their body weight. So for example, if you are, let's say, around 175 pounds and if you stuck to 0.7 grams per pound of your body weight of protein, again, if you're 175 pounds and you took your body weight times 0.7, you, your, your protein goal would be roughly around 120 grams per day. Okay. So number one, still a quick recap before we go on. Number one, when it comes to losing 10 to 15 pounds before summer, start now. Okay. We have plenty of time between now and June 21st to get started on our health and fat loss journey. Like I believe in you, you can do this. We have plenty of time. Number two, make sure that you find, maintain your calorie deficit and follow that quick formula that I gave you earlier. Number three, weight train two to four days per week. Number four, prioritize protein to help protect your muscle. Number five. So here's number five. Number five is walk more. So walking is the most underrated form of cardio for fat loss. It, it is very, very effective for fat loss because, you know, it doesn't require you to go to the gym. It doesn't cost you any money, except for maybe if you want to walk in shoes, the shoes would cost you money, of course. And you can do it with your family, your friends. It helps to reduce stress, improve mood. There's so many benefits of walking. And think about this, even though we think that working out and exercise, like purposeful exercise, that that causes us to burn a lot of calories, that may only be 30 minutes to an hour out of a you know 24 hour time span. And so let's say that you're awake for 16 hours. Okay. And of those 16 hours, you burn maybe, maybe 250 calories in a workout, but the rest of the time. So 15 hours, you can focus on getting more steps and walking more and that, and the number of calories you'd burn throughout the day would be double, if not triple that. And that is one key factor that can help you lose body, body fat and body weight without doing purposeful cardio. So take advantage of walking more. It's a great way to spend time with family and friends. You can get out in the sun, get some vitamin D, helps ele ele elevate mood, decrease your risk of, um, you know, of certain conditions. It helps to increase your good cholesterol as well. So a lot of great things when it comes to just walking more. In fact, if you're like, you know, Coach Chi, I'm not really sure where to start at. Let's start here. This is a great one to start at, you know. Uh, and a lot of people ask me, well, how do you figure up? step goals for your clients. It's, it's very simple. All you do is, you know, once you have a step tracker, you look from the past three days of your steps. So let's say that the past three days, you, you added those up and the average, you want to find your average of, the, of, of those three days. And let's say the average was, let's say 3000 steps, right? So, you know, I wouldn't want you to go from 3000 to 10,000. That'd be pretty tough. My first step goal for, for you would be to go from 3000 to maybe 4,000 or even 4,500 steps a day. That'd be a great start for you. So that is number five, walking more. Number six is to focus, focus on sleeping more. So if I know it's really hard, especially busy moms with kiddos, just keep doing your best. You know, I, I understand that you're going through a, a very busy and stressful time and, and, and know to that, you know, taking intentional time to have a, have an evening routine, have a morning routine can help you solidify 
a great sleeping schedule. In fact, getting between seven to nine hours of sleep at night can help increase your energy, can help increase your motivation, and also keep your hunger and cravings at bay as well. A lot of studies show that if you only get six or a few hours of sleep a night, that could affect not only your energy, so it can plummet energy, you can also plummet motivation, but also increase cravings, especially cravings for sweets, right? And also that, but also just make you hungrier and feel less full after eating. So it's very, very important to focus on sleep. It has a direct, actually an indirect impact on, on your weight loss because it could affect how hungry you feel, how full you feel. It could affect your energy. I know the days I only get four to five hours of sleep. I'm like, the last thing I'm going to do is go to the gym or go for a walk. And so sleep does have a big impact on your weight loss journey. So that was number six. Number seven is one of my favorite ones. It is follow the 80-20 rule. So follow the 80-20 rule. And so he, here's what the 80-20 rule means. It means this. You do not have to be perfect all the time to lose body fat. In fact, the difference in fat loss results that you would get by eating healthy 80% of the time is just as effective as if you ate healthy or perfect 100% of the time. So eating all clean foods, healthy foods, they will not lose they will, that doing that will not help you lose fat any faster. Because the only gauge of fat loss is being in a protein focused calorie deficit. Okay. It's important to have some flexibility in your diet. And that's one thing we do here at tandem with our clients. We have, we use a flexible diet, which means that we give ranges for our calorie and macro goals. And we allow fun foods like, you know, wine and going out to eat. And we don't restrict foods from our clients because I've learned throughout my own journey, 18, 19 years ago, that what I restricted, it persisted. And that really came back to haunt me pretty big. So, um, I always try to recommend, you know, incorporating your favorite foods within the context of your calorie goals. And, you know, we support that with our clients through meal plans through, in fact, one of the newest things we have now is a meal plan generator that allows our clients to make as many customized meal plans as they want. And they actually love, love that. And so know that you don't, you do not have to lose, you don't have to be perfect to lose body fat. Just do your best to have most of your foods from nutrient dense food sources and then have the rest from you know from from fun fun foods like for example i love pancakes i eat pancakes like almost every day and i put a lot of if you watch my ig videos um uh, on ig so i we're on ig at, at tandem nutrition i put a lot of chocolate chips in my pancakes and i do not use use sugar free syrup okay i use real organic like maple syrup uh and if you want to know why uh i'm happy to share why but it's not low calorie. Let's just say that. So that's my 20% right there. And, and last thing I want to say is too, what you do most of the time is more important than what you do some of the time. So what you do most of the time is more important than what you do some of the time. So that is our seven key things to help you start losing body fat, 10 to 50 pounds before summer. Let's quickly recap those. Number one, start now. Make a decision. In fact, I want to know from you, from this list of things that went over today, I want you to hit me up on Instagram at Tandem Nutrition and tell me one thing that you plan to start with as you embark on your health journey this summer if you haven't started yet. And if you have started, you know, let me know how it's going. I'd love to hear how your progress uh, has been since you started. And also if there's of course, any questions that I can answer for you. So number one is start now. Number two is find your calorie deficit and maintain your calorie deficit. Number three is make sure that your weight training between two and four days per week. Number four, make sure that you are prioritizing protein. Protein protects your muscle mass. Number five, get in some steps. Steps is a great way to lose body fat through burning more calories without going to a gym. It's one of the most effective strategies that we use with our clients to help them lose body fat without spending more time away from their families at the gym doing cardio. Number six is focus on sleeping more. Sleep is so, so important. And lastly, follow the 80 to 20 rule. 
Again, what you do most of the time is more important than what you do some of the time. If you found this episode helpful, please share on your Instagram stories. Tag me. I would love to hear um, your feedback, of course. And if you found this helpful, feel free to give this this podcast uh, and this episode a rating and review. It would mean the world to me. So thank you so much for listening in. Uh, I hope to hear from you. And if you ever have any questions, you know where to find me. Have a great rest of your day, and I will talk with you soon. God bless. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Tandem Talk Show. If you're enjoying the podcast, please feel free to rate, subscribe, and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time.